Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The people are waiting for a plan. They're waiting for this government to come up with something concrete, something realistic about youth unemployment. They're waiting for an acknowledgement that, particularly in Auckland, there's a housing crisis, but it doesn't appear from the Prime Minister's comments in question time today that he even accepts there's a problem. They're waiting to hear when this government will do something about the number of apprentices that are being laid off. They're wanting to know when this government will come up with a plan to grow the economy and get us out of this mess. But, sir, while the people are waiting for a plan, in Auckland over recent weeks, what they've been handed by this government is a fiasco and a shambles. And we've seen that, uh, sir, in the creation of a Māori statutory board on the Auckland Council put in place by this national government that will appoint unelected Māori members to council committees where much of the work of council is done, uh, but given full voting rights, sir, and that is an abuse of de the democratic uh, principles. What's worse is that that, uh, Ma that Māori statutory board is going to end up, at, at, at the most recent estimates, costing the Auckland ratepayer up to $1.9 million a year. And, uh, and that, sir, uh, is an outrage, and Aucklanders are uh, 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 angry. They don't understand why the government's done this. They are being hit in the pocket uh, to fund this undemocratic uh, Māori statutory board. Let's, let's recount a bit of the story uh, that will explain how we got there, sir. Uh, uh, back in 2009, Rodney Hyde threatened to resign at the prospect of dedicated Māori seats on the Auckland Council. Unfortunately, the Prime Minister didn't accept that offer. And what the Prime Minister did was that he did a shabby deal with the Māori Party to instead insert a Māori statutory board uh, into the Auckland Council, bypassing a perfectly good proposal for democratically elected Māori seats uh, on the Auckland Council and instead putting unelected people on there. And, and then at the behest of the Māori Party at the Select Committee, uh, sir, uh, a deal was done, a shabby deal, to give the members of those council committees appointed by the unelected Māori statutory board to give them full voting rights alongside uh, councillors who have been elected by the people of Auckland. And so that is an outrage. The columns of the New Zealand Herald are full of it and Aucklanders don't like it. Uh, I see that TV3 has just launched a new satire series. Uh, it's a comedy series designed to send up uh, Rodney Hyde's Super City. Well, sir, they don't need to make a comedy. They don't need to make a satire. They should just come here and listen to Rodney Hyde in this house because you couldn't write this stuff. This is the minister who, uh, who is the self-styled minister of, for ratepayers. He's the fallen perk buster. And what does he do? He stiffs the Auckland ratepayer for $1.9 million a year to fund his statutory board. He is the minister who claims to be the great apostle of one person, one vote. He, he claims to be the great champion of democracy, and what has, he, what has he done? He's imposed on the people of Auckland an unelected board with decision-making powers on council committees, and that, sir, is wrong. Uh, there's a reason Aucklanders don't like it, and um, we've seen over the last few days some interesting voices. Mike Lee, the former chairman of the, of the Auckland Regional Council, has called this an appalling fiasco. Key and Hyde should fix it, he says. Well, what does Cameron Brewer say? Cameron Brewer is not exactly a leading light of the left on the Auckland Council. And what does he say? He says the Auckland Council was let down by poorly drafted legislation. Mayor Len Brown's trying to make the best of a bad deal. He's trying to work with the statutory board and abide by the, the terms of the legislation. What does Peter Sharple say, Minister of Māori Affairs and Rodney Hyde's ministerial colleague? He says that Rodney Hyde should either stand by his legislation uh, or resign. But we see in the House today uh, Rodney Hyde has no intention of resigning because he refuses to take responsibility for this mess, for this fiasco, and it's in his DNA. And we've seen it before in this House. We saw when Rodney Hyde took his girlfriend on a trip to London, Toronto, Portland and Los Angeles and spent tens of thousands of dollars of taxpayers' money. Well, there was a week of news interviews, of doorstops in the corridors of Parliament, of embarrassing revelations before Rodney Hyde finally backed down and took responsibility and paid some of that money back. We saw it with his, his uh, denial 
uh, his withholding of the information about David Garrett for years, the ex-party's law and order spokesperson.